Thank you very much. We now like to have an oppo, a photo opportunity. The first one would like to have the deputy president with the minister of science and technology, Minister Kubain Gubane, and the premier, Sylvia Lucas. We would anticipate that there would be standing on the side of the plaque. No, okay. And then the Deputy President, the DST Minister and the Premier remain and they are joined by all former Department of Science and Technology or Ministers of Science and Technology and other Ministers uh, from South Africa that can join the uh, Deputy President, the Minister and the Premier. So we have a second photo opportunity. Minister Mangena, Minister Kubane, Mr. Pando. <laughs> and then the next opportunity, they will then be joined by uh, ministers from our partner countries in the continent and ambassadors. So if they are here, if they could join the photo shoot. wondering if uh, the Deputy President and the Minister are willing to take a few questions from the media, if they are, one or two, because we will have opportunity at the main hall, but if you want to have maybe two or three would allow that uh, at this point in time. And I'll ask Tommy with the microphone in the front perhaps to facilitate that very quickly if there is one or two. Good morning, colleagues. Sorry, I'm just going to ask a question. Okay. Sound, please. Good morning, morning. Okay. Looks like it's. Okay. Okay, let's, let's move quickly. Deputy President, what does uh, this SKA project mean for South Africa in terms of its taking leadership in science and technology in the world, basically, in this world first? I think <laughs> Now this is a very significant uh, project uh, that sets uh, the country on a path towards uh, development 
Um, well, it's not uh, it's not South Africa alone that would uh, benefit. All the countries that came together to contribute are going to benefit. But in terms of science and research, South Africa will be on a good footing. Yes. Um, a, a number of science minister, Naleri Pando, Minister Naleri Pando as well, has spoken about uh, developing the science um, uh, economy. Um, where are we with that? Well, uh, this is a first step in the right direction. Uh, remember, science and technology will always be on the cutting edge of our movement forward. So there can be any development, there can be any innovation if there's no research, uh, there's no innovation. So everything starts from research, then you innovate, then you can move forward as a country. Uh, this is a good platform. Uh, to enable us uh, to study, to learn, uh, learn a lot of things. And then in the process, we'll uh, invent new technologies that will uh, be able to be used by people, uh, generations to come. So we were still very far from that, uh, from that point. But this it's going to open all the gates. Thank you very much, colleagues. Remember, we have time the other side. Mm -hmm. So we'll engage properly once we have done with the interviews, with the formal proceedings. And the DP will still be here for, for more engagements. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. And uh, from now on, uh, we will announce the departure of uh, the uh, Excellency Deputy President and the entourage who will allow them to leave first and then most of us and the rest of us will go back to the complex where the main function is going to be held.
two that are not in active service anymore. <laughs> Four of them in a row sitting there. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> because it's, it, it is clear to me that you are supporting SKA. And please don't let the Minister of Mineral Resources take away SKA to Kala. <laughs> Honourable members of the executive present here, our ministers from other countries, our sister countries, our partners in the project, members of the diplomatic corps, the executive mayor of Pixley Kaseme, the mayor of Karieberg, councillors present here, the chairperson of the National Portfolio Committee, all those that are involved in SKA, the SKA team, you are acknowledged. Because if we want to keep time, we won't be able to call all the protocols. I am looking for the first page of my speech, DP. I cannot find it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, it is indeed an honor for me to, on behalf of the Northern Cape Province, express a very warm welcome to, in particular, the Deputy President on his initial visit to the SKA. He's so impressed he's going to come back for a whole week. It is equally pleasing to have all the other distinguished guests in our beautiful province. Beautiful, nay. You, you acknowledge that it, this is a beautiful province. We are truly humbled and we are honored to have the privilege of your company today. Today, in the country and in this province, we are taking yet another step to carve the footprint into the scientific canvas that is unfolding for all of us to see. We are witnessing today one of, if not the most significant of scientific instruments ever to be developed. We have over the years seen the evolution of what was just an idea somewhere, someday, becoming the, the Karua Array Telescope called CAT-7, and today, the 64-dish Mirka telescope and its extensive infrastructure. I think for a moment, let us give a round of applause to all those that have been involved to bring us to this point. <laughs> also, allow me to extend a special word of welcome towards the energetic and intellectually a girl, SKA is a project engineers and scientists who made what we are about to witness a reality. Not forgetting the South African government officials for their efforts and inputs from the side of our province. We are certain that the name of our province will be cited in all scientific publications that have and will emanate from the work done with this instrument. I believe that. A special welcome also to our learners who are participating in the SKA undergraduate bursary program. We are proud and want to express our gratitude for their academic achievements and are looking forward to the first cohort of local graduates at the end of this academic year. Our involvement with the SKA project makes this the most interesting and fulfilling project that we have ever been partners to. The Northern Cape is indeed a proud partner in the development of this mega science project. We see our partnership strengthening and are waiting to see ourselves as co-contributors to the growth that this project is going to bring to the general body of scientific knowledge. The SKA project has been very involved and has not limited itself solely to the building of the telescope and for that we are grateful. With the support of the project office, tremendous inroads have been made into the education sector in this area. This includes the establishment of the cyber lab, the computer laboratory, the community computer center, as well as the technical training facility at Clearfontaine, to mention but a few. Honorable Deputy President, we as the Northern Cape Province, in partnership with the National Department of Science and Technology, has since 2006 been involved in the South African effort to host this mega science project the square kilometer array. That's why I get excited when I see Dr. Fanarov, because he's the person that really make me to understand what this SKA is about. 
with so much more happening in terms of development around the SKA, we as a province can only continue to pledge our strongest and unconditional support towards this project. I invite you now to take the time to savor the moment as we are about to witness yet again this country's scientific and technologi technological prowess having shared these few thoughts. I trust that all of you feel welcome in the company of the people of the Northern Cape Province. Thank you very much. Thanks a million, uh, Premier. The welcome was so warm, I think uh, most of us are no longer feeling the cold. Thank you very much. So we'll go into uh, the scientific part of uh, this celebration where we will be requesting the Managing Director of the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory, Dr. Rob Adam, to do the presentation on the Meerkat Panorama. And then immediately it will be followed by Dr. Happy Sitole, who runs the Center for High Performance Computing. So let's start with uh, Dr. Rob Adam and request him then to give us his first part of the presentation. Honorable Deputy President, uh, Ministers Kabai and Gabani, Hanakom Pandor, other dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a presentation of the remarkable scientific output of the Meerkat Telescope. I need to start at the beginning to most accurately describe where we are now. In the science and technology portfolio of the apartheid government, the key drivers were energy security and military dominance of the subcontinent. In 1994, everything changed. And those of us who joined government were faced not just with the difficulty of using the old institutions to express new strategies, but with the exhilarating challenge of having the freedom to do entirely new things. The world had then opened up to South Africa. Technocrats like myself were given the mandate by politicians in our new government to think really big. It was truly a pleasure to serve as a senior official during those days. And I'm very happy to see several of my partners and comrades involved in these ventures here today. Derek Hanukom and I were in jail together, spent many a long afternoon debating what we would do in different portfolios in an ANC government. Little did we know what amazing opportunities would actually be given to us. Me as a director general and, and now the managing director of Soreo and technical leader, and him as a minister. One of these opportunities we saw was the chance to draw large northern hemisphere investment into South African science infrastructure. There, there were several of us thinking about this, in particular, the first Director General of Science and Technology, Roger Jardine, the then Deputy CEO of the Foundation for Research Development, Khotso Mohele, and myself. And I'm pleased to see that both Roger and Khotso are here with us today. In those days... Yeah. <laughs> we set ourselves the task of looking at South Africa from the perspective of what geographic or resource advantage we offered to the plans of global science infrastructure. I don't have the time today to go into all the details, but one of the areas of fundamental science that emerged as a front runner from this analysis was astronomy. The resource we offered, of course, was the southern skies, not generally visible from the northern hemisphere, as well as excellent viewing conditions as the result of our arid, sparsely populated interior. We then set about looking for the big projects, those you know, whose leaders would recognize South Africa as the destination of choice for multi-wavelength astronomy. One by one, we found these projects, or they found us. Just a uh, slight technical digression. There are just three regions of the electromagnetic spectrum for which the Earth's atmosphere is effectively transparent. First, the optical and radio regions, and then the gamma region 
which produces optical signals in the upper atmosphere that can be faithfully tagged uh, to the gamma rays that generated them. First came the optical 11 meter class SALT, the Southern African Large Telescope located near Sutherland, also the Northern Cape Province. Then HESS, the gamma ray telescope in Namibia. And finally, the biggest opportunity of all arrived, the possibility of bidding for the hosting of a square kilometer array radio telescope. I, I still remember that day when Justin Jonas, Hotsa Mukherjee and George Nicholson and I decided that I should take the responsibility to escalate the, the SKA project to the level of political decision makers. Uh, at that time, Ben Ngubani was our minister and had the foresight to take news of this project through to the cabinet of the day. From then onwards, it's been a longer, harder road than we imagined it would be. Fortunately, we've learned a lot about how big projects can fail. I had been personally very involved with the Pebble Bed Modular Reactor Project, South Africa's largely homegrown nuclear reactor design. One of the key re reasons the PBMR failed, in my view, was the absence of rig rigorous engineering prototyping. So the design kept changing, technical problems emerge, as they always do. As a result, we didn't pour a single bucket of concrete, and our political backers became frustrated and withdrew their support. South Africa's strategy, which is not too different from Australia's, I might add, leading towards the bid for hosting of the SKA, was to first build a single antenna, a demonstrator, in 2007. Then in 2009, we built our first array, the Career Array Telescope, or CAT7, with seven antennas, coordinated by means of a correlator. In designing the CAT7 array, we made mistakes that we learned from before moving up to the next level, namely the Meerkat 64 antenna array, which we are unveiling today. In our thinking, Meerkat would perform a dual role it would showcase South African engineering prowess to the international community during the bid phase, but if South Africa lost this bid, we would still have the most powerful telescope of its kind in the world at our disposal until the SKA was built. Meerkat is indeed a product of South African engineering with localization in this project standing at 75%. Also because of the rigorous prototyping approach we used, it's the first large telescope anywhere ever to be performing significantly better than its design spec. Yeah. Uh, before I hand over to, my, to our chief scientist, Dr. Fernando Camilla, to assist me, he'll show you the breathtaking images now being produced by Meerkat and explain their significance to you I need to say one or two personal words of thanks. And, and first of all, I'd like to thank the South African government for always believing in us and for giving us the resources to make excellence possible. <clears throat> and next, I thank the Sereo staff who've been the smartest and best bunch of people it could be possible to work with. Also, my, my predecessor, Bernie Fanaroff, who really put this project in a winning position. And, and Justin Jonas, who has, in my view, an unerring physical intuition, without which I know our telescope architecture would have been all over the place. And also to, to the National Research Foundation for always working with us and supporting us, making sure that everything worked uh, according to a range of government systems, always giving their support. I know I must have appeared cantankerous and ungrateful at times, and for that I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I, think, I think all of you realize it was all in a good cause. Now I'm going to call Fernando up here to assist me uh, to show you the images and explain them. Thanks, Rob. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Deputy President, ministers, honorable guests, colleagues. Um, it's my great pleasure, my true great pleasure, to share with you these images today. 
Uh, I'm doing so, of course, on behalf of all my colleagues at the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory and of the thousands of South Africans who over more than 10 years have envisioned, supported, designed and built this amazing discovery instrument. It's really a remarkable machine and all South Africans should be proud of it, as you'll see. So, moving on. The first question that might arise for, 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 for some of you is why do radio astronomy? And I'll just give you two, two slides uh, from a scientific perspective to show you why. Here is a, an image of a very famous galaxy right of center on your screens. This was taken with the Mirlich telescope uh, in Sutherland, recently inaugurated. Uh, this telescope will follow Meerkat every night for the next five plus years. It will just follow whatever Meerkat is looking at in the radio waves. Uh, this telescope will look uh, in the optical domain. So you see that galaxy. Basically what you're seeing is the combined light from billions of stars very far away. Now let's see what Meerkat shows. This is what you see with Meerkat. Something entirely different, obviously. It's spectacular from a technical perspective. Now, just a, a note, uh, in this presentation, every radio image will be colored in this yellow-orange color scheme. Now, radio waves are not orange, they're not yellow, they're not blue, they're not red, they're radio waves. That's why we have to build uh, instruments of this sort to detect them and have, after a lot of work. Uh, to, to, to basically make images of the sort. We have to represent them somehow. We are humans, we have eyes. So wherever you see orange or yellow, that means there are some radio waves there. Wherever you see nothing, it means there are no radio waves coming from those sources. Now, what is this type of object? What are you seeing in these radio waves? It's not the starlight, as you saw in the previous image. What you're actually seeing is a jet of subatomic particles look at, moving at close to the speed of light coming out of a black hole at the center of that galaxy, a very massive black hole. And these jets of particles are emitting radio waves and eventually emitting these enormous radio lobes. Now, trust me that this image is the best image of this very famous galaxy, the fourth brightest radio source in the sky ever made by any telescope in the world. And over the coming few years, uh, astronomers in South Africa and around the world will be using Meerkat, making images of this sort to address some of the very uh, key questions in modern astrophysics that tell us about how galaxies were formed, how galaxies have evolved, how we have come to be essentially the way we are in our galaxy. Now, I, I want to say this on one, one side note, coincidence. These, these types of features, these jets coming out of the centers of galaxies, were first identified by an American astronomer in 1918, 100 years ago. And of course, we all know what happened of great significance for this nation 100 years ago, so it's an interesting coincidence. <laughs> Moving on to how do we do radio astronomy? It's actually it's very different from ordinary optical astronomy. You don't just take a photo, or you don't take a snapshot with a CCD camera. So in this cartoon, I show you on the left, radio waves coming from the sky in yellow. They hit our meerkat dishes. They are converted to digital signals that travel through buried uh, underground cables that arrive at the KAPB, our, a, a building just 100 meters away from here. And in there, we have some of the fastest computers in Africa that are processing these hundreds of gigabytes of data per second that are arriving at this building from the 64 dishes. After that processing, the data gets sent to Cape Town at some of our equipment that is at the Center for High Performance Computing, and there, scientists further analyze the data, and typically days to weeks to months after the data was collected, they actually come up with those remarkable images. So it's very different, and all of this is controlled by our wonderful staff of, of operators uh, in the control room in Cape Town. Now, this is schematic, but of course, we're talking about people, and we're talking largely about South African people. So let me, I pressed once one button too many. Yeah, let me show you, just lead you through some of our colleagues uh, that are doing this work. Uh, so on the upper left, you see, for instance, Priscilla over there, she works um, in one of the teams here, the servo team. And then Virgilian on the upper left, picture there a couple of years ago, building the telescope, is now in the receiver group. Uh, on the right, you don't see people, you see machines, but they are branded with SK South Africa logo because they were built uh, by our teams. 
at the top you see a machine that's part of a massive scale high performance storage cluster that was built by our team to store all the massive amounts of data that we collect. And that unit, those units, were built at one-fifth the cost of commercial available products. Millions and millions of rands are saved by this. This, this provides commercial opportunities. <laughs> on, on the lower left, to the right of the image, you see Kucho, who, who is somewhere around the room. I encourage you to go talk to several of these people afterwards. He is the leader of that team that built some of that machinery on the upper right. And Kucho is looking over the shoulder of Sharmila. Sharmila, who's also in the room, is the leader of our science commissioning team, and she's speaking there with one of, uh, one of her team members. They're looking over a galaxy. So this is all about people. And finally, on the lower right, you have, um, you have basically <laughs> Audrey and her, her happy team of, of um, operators there. Uh, Audrey is also in the room today, and you're happy to, I, I, I encourage you to talk to her. So these are some of the amazing people in South Africa that have built and they are operating that will use this telescope. Now, uh, for those of you, <laughs> who haven't had a chance to go around site today, just a brief uh, flyover site. So we are sitting at the bottom on that pin labeled KPB, and then all our dishes are indicated by these, all these very differently colored dots. I'm going to show you next four images, radio images, taken with ever improving radio instrumentation here in the Karoo. First with a CAT7 array, that's the seven dish array at the bottom of your screen. And then later, the final three images, will be sh I'll be showing you the same portion of sky observed with four Meerkat dishes, 16 Meerkat dishes, and finally all Meerkat dishes. And you will see the improvement. So the first one is with, with the CAT7 array, back in 2012. This is what you see. It doesn't look very remarkable. This is some galaxy in the faraway universe. You just see a blob, again, this orange-yellow means that there are radio waves coming from that portion of the sky. Fine, you can't tell what this is. Four meerkat dishes. Looks very different now. Three dots, but they're in a line, but perhaps that's a coincidence. Are they really related? Are they three separate galaxies in the distant universe? Let's see what we see with 16 meerkat dishes. It is clear that this is one object. There's something going on at the center there. It's a massive black hole jets of particles and radio waves are being emitted, and then these lobes. Uh, similar to that earlier image, in a sense, but that, that one is much, much brighter. This one is much harder to, this was not known before Meerkat came along. And finally, with the 64 dishes, this is the best image we can make nowadays of this particular galaxy. Now, what you've been seeing gradually is the improved resolution, sharper images as you build dishes that are spaced further and further apart. In radio astronomy, the further apart you put the dishes, the sharper the view of the sky you get. Uh, now, but you also see now increased sensitivity. You start seeing a lot more of these dots, these points of light on this image. All of those, or most of those, are galaxies in the distant universe in their own right. Because, of course, 64 dishes are far more sensitive, can detect fainter uh, features than the previous number of dishes. But let me demonstrate for you in a spectacular fashion the increased sensitivity of Meerkat. This is an image, the best existing image of this patch of sky that was known before Meerkat. It was made with an Australian telescope of a previous generation, so of course we improve. There are about 20 separate uh, radio sources in there, radio galaxies. Now I'm about to show you how this patch of sky looks like with Meerkat. 5,000 radio galaxies. Every point of light you see there is a galaxy in the distant universe. We knew of 20 in this patch of sky, and now we see 5,000 with Meerkat. It's astonishing. So to conclude, I have two or three slides uh, to go. You've seen that Meerkat is a remarkably sensitive instrument. It has high angular resolution. It can make sharp images of the sky. And we have, in fact, started doing the science that it was designed for. There are some uh, scientists in the audience that have started collecting data with Meerkat as of April of this year and are starting to do their science. But we were wondering a couple of months back, uh, thinking of, of this event, of something special to share with the South African public and with the world. And we thought, why not try to look at the center of our galaxy, at the very center of the Milky Way, which is towards the lower left there on your screen. The center of the galaxy is rising. Now, the problem is the center of the galaxy is very far away, 
30,000 light years away. It takes light and radio waves 30,000 years to travel from there to here. But ordinary light cannot penetrate all the dust that lies between us and the center of the galaxy. So you cannot see anything with salt or with the biggest telescope that will ever be built by humans in the optical domain. But radio waves can penetrate. Radio waves can take us to the center of the Milky Way. Now, to give you one last slide for context, this is a representation of the Milky Way from the outside, but it's a scientifically accurate representation. So if there is life elsewhere in the universe, some people, some beings on other planets in other galaxies might see the Milky Way as something like this. The solar system is near the bottom. You might see there it's labeled solar system. 30,000 light years from the very center of the galaxy. Where we know from other observations there's a massive black hole. There's a black hole that has as much mass as 4 million of our suns. So it's a very interesting region, very special region. All sorts of unexplained phenomena happen surrounding that area. There's a lot to learn, and we cannot do it with ordinary telescopes. We have to use uh, radio telescopes, as well as X-ray telescopes and some other kinds, but radio is really the best. So we decided we wanted to look in there with Meerkat. Now, you have to understand that the center of the galaxy is a very, very, very tricky region to make images of. Because unlike the slides that I've shown you until now, that region, as you'll see shortly, the center of the galaxy, has very bright features and very faint features. It has very large features and very small features. And the combination of all of that makes it super hard to make an image that is, that is good, that is not full of artifacts and so on. But you're about to see what I'm about to show you to finish this presentation. is the best view ever made ever seen the clearest view of the center of the Milky Way galaxy by any humans on Earth ever. And it was made with Meerkat, and this is what we see. This is the center of the Milky Way. It's, it's an incredibly complex region, and in, in the interest of time, because we have to keep on with the program, or the DG will remind me, uh, I will tell you that after this event is finished, the speaking portion, after we're having lunch, we will remove these banners, and there's an enormous banner of this, of this image, uh, Meerkat image. Uh, so I'll just, uh, to conclude, I'll just show you a couple of zoom-ins. On the left, you have star-forming regions. There's many young stars being formed. Then some of those stars explode at the end of their lives, so you have a supernova remnant on the left. Uh, on the right side of the image, you have these remarkable filaments that exist nowhere else in the galaxy. So this center of the galaxy is special, obviously, for, for reasons that we can appreciate, even if we're not scientists, but it's also special because, because it's the center. I mean, we are going around it. The Earth, in 200 million years, it goes once around the center of the galaxy. Since dinosaurs appeared on Earth, the Earth has gone once around the center of this very, very distant, very exciting region. So you have these filaments, they exist nowhere else in the galaxy, we don't know precisely what they are. Scientists will be studying this image. There will be papers coming out of these data for years to come. There will be students in South Africa, PhD students, master's students, that will work on these data to give us a better understanding of how our universe works. And finally, at the center, that is the actual very center of the galaxy, that bright region to the right there. So all I wanted to say in conclusion is that this is a remarkable achievement by any human standards by world standards. South Africans have built a telescope that can give us the clearest view of the center of our Milky Way galaxy. So congratulations to you all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, one of the difficult things uh, for me as the Director General who followed Rob is to be able to tell him where to get off sometime. But you can see with his physique, even when he runs a little bit over time, it's not easy for me to say, Rob, you've over time. But we owe each other a lot. When things don't work, I blame him. When things work at the DST, I take the full credit. So let's move on and ask uh, Dr. Happy Sitolo to tell us what happens with this large amount of data that you've heard about. Dr. Sitolo, please. Okay, 
Thank you, DG, and um, good morning, uh, Deputy President and the ministers here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have been given five minutes, so I have to stick to that time. Fortunately, Fernando has done most of the work that I was supposed to do, and uh, mainly, Deputy President, is to um, just to let you know, uh, with the funding that you have given us, uh, what were we doing with it? Because the questions were, why don't you do this thing on a single computer? Why do you need so many computers? And I think Fernando managed to tell us that the more telescopes you have, the clarity and better observations you can make. And it's the same also, immediately when we put so many telescopes, it's a lot of data that comes and you can't do it on a laptop. Hence, we need a high performance computing and we are very grateful for the South African government to have bought into that vision because otherwise we wouldn't have seen those images that Fernando has shown. So what I would like to share with you quickly in these 15 minutes is that at some point in time we were called in Rome with Benny and the other people and the question was, when you are going to be building the SKA, what will be the other benefits? Are we just going to let astronomers look at the skies and spend all this money or the other things that we will be able to benefit out of it? And, and those are some of the things that I would like to share with you. First of all is that this compute is available to all South Africans. As you can see, those dots there is all the universities where all our scientists are in South Africa. So the computing capacity is available to all the universities, even including our brand new university like Sol Blaki and Pumalanga. But again, this has also been made possible because in the vision of the Department of Science and Technology was that it's not just going to be the compute, we will have to get the data to be moved. And what you see there is the investment on the broadband infrastructure across the country uh, that uh, we are also being in the process to upgrade it, but also it uh, links up with the international. Where you see there on your right hand side is uh, the, uh, uh, the, the WAX, which is the West Africa cable and also on the left-hand side is the CECOM. So basically, we are able to transport data from the country and share the data with the rest of uh, uh, the world. And in preparation to this, uh, Deputy President, is that we have built world-class computing systems that Fernando showed you uh, where this processing was done. And I was told by one of the scientists there that it took a few hours, which uh, in the past it could have taken years or months and hence we are saying today uh, with all these complexities we'll need more of this computing this uh, the computer that is sitting in south africa is uh, in the top 500 supercomputers in the world and we keep on increasing on that and again the integration of these systems was done by young engineers that you can see in the picture there which are south african engineers so uh, we like to localize things. But the other important thing in answering the question, besides astronomy, what else are we going to do? We have already shown that uh, in the different uh, areas, for an example, on climate change, South Africa is a signatory to international protocol on climate change. A lot of this work is being done in these computers. Uh, we are looking at mineral processing, uh, these are some of the things that we are doing in this country. Engineering, where we have developed some of the softwares in this country, and they have been used by multinationals. And we had to convince the world about SKA to show that we have got the capacity to process this data, and we did that with SKA. We're going into health. Some of new industries, for an example, now Deputy President, like uh, the animation, 3D animation industry now is growing in South Africa because we have got the, the uh, computing capacity. So this computing is not just going to be used for astronomy. We can extend that to some of our economic activities. As you can see here, as we prepare for the fourth industrial revolution, 
Some of our industries in South Africa have already taken up and they are using this high performance computing. And it's a vast amount of our industries coming from petrochemicals, uh, engineering, and even small industries in uh, uh, bioinformatics, which are uh, health related uh, uh, industries. But uh, another thing that we have put when we talked about the SKA was that this is not just a South African project, it's an African project. I think when the DG introduced the people, we have got uh, many of the African partner countries who are here today. And one of the things is how do we also assist them to be able to be prepared uh, to take advantage of uh, the, the investment that are being made on the SKA. And what we can see here is the different developments in these countries. And all the countries have had the opportunity to be trained for the high performance computing moving from Ghana, all the countries. And also what we have also seen is that there has started to be some activities in uh, those countries where we saw some young people in those countries that we trained being able to participate in very large projects like the Large Hadron Collider. There is a picture of a young man from Botswana who we trained and uh, he participated in the recent uh, uh, shutdown at uh, CERN. And this is one of the contributions in, uh, that we are doing. And uh, all these countries have got the computing resources that uh, we have uh, assisted them in, 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 in putting together. And uh, uh, on the other thing is that uh, we can only achieve that with human capital. And around that is to train the young people in this country. Um, we don't want to be seen getting into the data centers and you find gray hairs like myself. And for that, we, start, we are going to start right from the beginning and we are training young kids at undergraduate to start building the supercomputers, optimizing them and doing meaningful work with them. And we train these people, we put them and they competed with the rest of the world. And I'm happy to say that uh, Deputy President, that uh, South Africa has been winning gold about three times in this case. Second, the worst position that South Africa has been competing globally was the third position, which was uh, just uh, 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 one week ago in Germany. So all the time. <laughs> and, and most of these kids already have found their way uh, in contributing already on the SKA and other projects uh, within the country. So in summary, I could say uh, all the work that is being done here in uh, the Meerkat, it is going to help us uh, to prepare uh, thoroughly for SKA. As Fernando has already indicated, the more telescopes, the more complexity, and we are going to need more computing. So we are ready for the task and we are grateful for the support that the country is giving us. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Dr. Sitole. Uh, in the beginning, in the interest of time, we moved on with the program, but I'd also like to acknowledge the representatives uh, from Madagascar and Mauritius, as you know, they are one of uh, some of the countries that are partnering with us uh, in the uh, SKA. So I'd now uh, like to call upon uh, Dr. Phil Diamond. I saw him earlier on, yes, who is the uh, Director General for the SKA uh, based in Manchester. We'll come back to the cultural item a little later. Round of applause for Dr. Diamond. Thank you, Phil. Mr. Deputy President, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, it's an honor to be here today. A generation ago, as Rob Adam told us, South Africa set out a bold vision to transform and empower the country. And we in the rest of the world have watched your journey with hope and admiration ever since. In this journey, our South African colleagues 
have built on a small existing astronomy infrastructure to develop and create a thriving field. With astronomy degrees in universities up and down the country, an enthusiasm for science, and some of the best telescopes in the world. Using homegrown talent, innovation, and ambition, they've created Meerkat, a proudly South African instrument, yet attracting collaborators from around the world. And today we stand here in the Northern Cape, in South Africa, in Africa, to inaugurate what is the most powerful radio telescope on the planet. It's a telescope that sets a new benchmark in astronomy and a new benchmark in the internationalization of South African science. As a nearly 40-year veteran of radio astronomy, I can tell you I am astounded by the images that we have just seen unveiled by Fernando Camillo. I, I really wish that such capabilities had been available in my youth, uh, but it's, um, it's excellent to see them available now. South Africa has seen a knowledge revolution, and now with this new instrument, it does, it stands poised to be at the forefront of astronomy and data science. The advances that will come from South African scientists and others from all over the world will be manifold. Their origin, though, will be right here in this magnificent new infrastructure. I want now to look a little bit into the future. In 2012, South Africa and Australia were chosen as the sites to co-host the Square Kilometre Array. We call it SKA. What is unique about the SKA is that no single country owns it. The SKA is a global project. I believe it was Desmond Tutu who said that differences are not intended to separate, to alienate. We are different precisely in order to realize our need of one another. The SKA is a testament to this. Twelve sovereign countries and their governments fund it, and this number is growing. Instruments, antennas, technology and software are being in, developed in 20 countries, from Canada to Spain, Sweden to South Africa, the Netherlands to China. And eventually, all of this equipment and software will make its way to the sites in Australia and here in South Africa. This would not be possible without the strong and continuous support of the governments of all of our partner countries and the large investments being made, in particular in the SKA's three host countries, Australia, South Africa and the United Kingdom, where the SKA Global Headquarters is just being completed as we speak. Here in South Africa, the infrastructure, the roads, the power, the fiber optic networks, the telescopes, the supercomputing centers you have built, but also the skills you have taught and the experts you have trained are crucial in making the SKA possible. In doing all of this, Meerkat and the SKA are having an impact well beyond science, delivering opportunities in technology development and big data, promis promising spin-offs, creating jobs and skills, and providing education. In this respect, the human capital development program that our colleagues here in South Africa have been successfully running is exemplary having awarded financial support to over a 1,000 recipients since its inception in 2005, and, I believe, having contributed to support and uplift the local communities around the site here. The SKA's top international governing body, the Board of Directors, which I report to and which is here with me today, keeps a keen eye on these developments. It always seems impossible until it's done, said a very famous South African, Mr. Nelson Mandela. Today, Meerkat is done. It stands at the end of a chapter and the start of another one. South Africa and the South African people should be immensely proud. This is a fantastic milestone for the country, and it will certainly make history. 
Now the science can start in earnest and you can reap the scientific benefits of all of your hard work. The SKA is approaching the end of a chapter two with the detailed design uh, process wrapping up this year and the imminent creation of the intergovernmental organization that will run the International SKA Observatory. The start of construction of the SKA itself is around the corner. Meerkat, as well as the HERA telescope here on the site in South Africa, and the Australian SKA Pathfinder and the Murchison Widefield Array, both in Western Australia, are what we call precursor instruments. And alongside several other Pathfinder facilities located around the globe in SKA countries, they're providing invaluable lessons, teaching us in the SKA how to do things. And in a few years time, when it's conducted its major science programs, Meerkat will become an integral part of SKA. And so the anticipated success of the SKA heavily relies upon the success of Meerkat. In fact, some receiver bands for the future SKA telescope are being tested on Meerkat antennas as we speak, showing a seamless compatibility between these instruments. Earlier today, as we drove out to antenna 63, I believe it was, we passed some containers and equipment on the left-hand side of the road there. That is an SKA prototype dish, which arrived here on site on Monday. It is due to be assembled in the next few weeks. Its makeup symbolizes the SKA, made in China, Germany, and Italy. It includes instruments from Sweden, South Africa, and the United Kingdom, and contributions from Canada and France. It is only the first of many. In due time, another 133 SKA antennas, plus the 64 Meerkat antennas, will fill this plane. And eventually, we hope, more will extend into other African countries creating, without doubt, the largest research infrastructure on the planet. It is the job of the SKA organization that I lead to deliver this. And so, Mr. Deputy President, Excellencies, I look forward to continuing to work with you and your officials, your scientists and engineers, and to engage with the partner, African partner countries represented here today and other interested African countries to deliver on this bold vision that we all share. I congratulate you all who've been involved in Meerkat. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Dr. Phil Diamond. I will now um, request humbly um, the Minister of Science and Technology, Ms. Mamuloko Kubayengubane, to make the remarks and introduce uh, His Excellency Deputy President. I will not come back, um, Minister, until after the Deputy President has spoken. Round of applause for the Minister, please. the Director General of the Department of Science and Technology, His Excellency, the Deputy President of the country, uh, Mr. David Mabuza. I need to acknowledge the Minister of Education in um, Kenya, my dear sister and, and comrade, Ambassador Mina Mohamed, Minister Pando and Minister Hanekom, who are currently serving in the current cabinet, but who are former ministers of science and technology. Former ministers Mangena and Ngubani, um, Deputy Minister of DECO International Relations. Thank you for being here. It is through these partners that we are able to continue to work. Ambassadors who are here, uh, members of the Diplomatic Corps, SKA International Organization Board of Directors who are here. Um, Director General of SKA as well, um, Prof. Phil, 
international guests, distinguished um, guests, ladies and gentlemen, and more importantly as well, um, the team that has worked together, um, Rob Adams under your leadership and others, former Director Generals, I think we are very excited. We have the Premier here and MECs, councillors, but more importantly, people who have been part of this journey throughout, who have made time to be here with us. We really appreciate that. And seeing the images from Fernando just uh, as I was sitting made me wonder if I can still go back to school and take science, um, because it just makes it fascinating. For the young people who are here, I hope you are fascinated about what you are seeing here and choosing science as part of your careers. I'm very pleased to be here today to launch this milestone. For this project to be where it is, it has taken great efforts from many people many of whom are here with us today. This project is a clear demonstration to the world at large that nothing is impossible. When a group of people have a dream and they put effort to make sure that dream becomes a reality. This project is a concrete example of what global partnership can achieve and it has brought together SK funders and the coordinating consortium comprises of countries such as Australia, Canada, China, Germany, India, Italy, New Zealand, Sweden, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, and obviously my country, South Africa. In his address in 1996 on the inaugural of the Academy of Science of South Africa, our icon President Nelson Mandela said in affirming the changing science and technology landscape in South Africa that I quote, South Africa's first democratic government has given concrete and practical efforts, effects to its high regard for science by establishing the country's first ministry of science and technology. Its mandate includes a far-reaching transformation of our science and technology system in order to bring knowledge to bear in promoting growth and development to improve the quality of life of all South Africans." Unquote. I believe that since its establishment, the Department of Science and Technology has done very well in transforming not only the science and technology landscape, but the South African society as whole. Well. This project is a milestone, it's a major milestone in the transformation process that we have embarked on as a country since the first white paper on science and technology in 1996. It is, fitting, it is a fitting tribute that we are launching this milestone in the year that we are celebrating the centenary year of Tata Matiba and Mama Albertina Sisulu. These two heroes belong to a generation of leaders that fought hard to make it possible for us to be here today to wonder about the universe and its origin. More importantly, this project helps, also helps us as a country and the world at large to continue the culture of science, technology and innovation. The SKA as the largest telescope in the world puts us at the frontier of the in-depth studies of the universe. Through this project, we are going to attract scientists and scholars from all over the world, the results of which is anticipation of the innovation culture in South Africa. Countries that have developed at a faster rate have always been countries with a strong innovation culture driven by investments in science and technology. Such investments are important in retaining and attracting the most talented researchers. And I believe this is the best way that we can get our young people in South Africa to have an interest in science, technology, and innovation. To those who always wonder why projects like this are important, I will say to them in the words of the American cosmopologist Neil Tyson that I quote, Space exploration is a force of nature unto itself that no other force in society can rival. Not only does that get people interested in sciences and all the related fields, but it transforms the culture into one that values science and technology, and, and that's the culture that innovates. And in the 21st century, innovation in science and technology are the foundations of tomorrow's economy." Unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I present to you today His Excellency the Deputy President David Mabuza, who's going to deliver for us the keynote address. Uh, it is befitting Deputy President that you are here with us because as well as the Chair of the HRD Council, this fits well into that work that you are leading. The Deputy President of this country is also um, the Deputy President of the African National Congress. He has been the Premier of um, the Mpumalanga Province as well as held several um, positions in the African National Congress, including within government as former MEC. An educator himself, I think, is very fascinated to be here and seeing the images with him. He was very excited. Over to you, Deputy President, and thank you for honoring us. Thank you very much. Program Director, thank you for the opportunity, Minister. Uh, Mamloko, thank you very much for the, for the opportunity. Our host, uh, Premier Lucas, Ministers, and former Ministers in our midst, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, SKA International Organization and uh, the Board of uh, Directors, um, Director General of SKA, Prof. Diamond. I share the same view with you. I wish I can turn back the wheel of time so that I can fully experience what is happening. I tried science as a young boy, and I feel this is a very great opportunity for these youngsters that are coming after us. Very, very great opportunity. Distinguished uh, guests, our international guests, our mayors and councillors, and ladies and gentlemen. Today is a special day of pride for the continent of Africa. This day represents some of Africa's milestone in the successful interweaving of science, technology, and innovation into our solutions of dealing with our developmental challenges in our quest to catch up with the rest of the world and make our own contribution to civilization as a country. Our National Development Plan, Vision 2030, which is our blueprint for positioning our country on a greater developmental path asserts that science, technology, and innovation must play an increasing role in skills development, job creation, and economic growth. In mobilizing our nation to respond to the emerging opportunities that are presented to humanity, by the evolution of science and technology. Our government has committed to transformative science, technology, and innovation. This commitment to science, to technology, innovation, takes into account the evolving debates, research output, and inventions precipitated by the evolution of the fourth industrial revolution. We're in a period where we must think creatively in order to move forward. For our part as South African government, our Department of Science and Technology is making a very huge investment 
in research and development so that we can realize the coming into life of this fourth industrial revolution. To this effect, we would develop a public funded science, technology and innovation plan of action over the next 12 to 18 months that will result into socio-economic impact that will take our country a step forward. Through smart investment in research and development, we hope the Department of Science and Technology will support South African industry to grow and create more jobs through building scientific, technological, and knowledge-based capabilities. This international partnership of the Square Kilometre Array strengthens our collaboration as partner countries, scientists, and researchers, as well as private sector players. This collaborative work will unlock the full potential of our research and development that responds to the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. Future value creation lies in humans and machines working together to create new user experiences, new products, new services, and new possibilities. We are today demonstrating to the world and ourselves that nothing is impossible once we set our minds on a common objective and pool our resources to achieve such an objective. As the African continent, we take this opportunity to thank the world for having confidence in us as a country and entrusting us with a global science project of this magnitude. Today, here we are, launching the SKA Phase 1 in the form of the 64 dish. Uh, this word, I hear you call it meerkat. It's meerkat. <laughs> it's an African word. I'm, I'm trying to uh, think about it, and I feel it's African word. And I'm, I'm sure we must use the African's pronunciation. We take pride in the fact that a project of this mag magnitude was completed on time within the originally projected budget of 3.2 uh, billion. This efficiency and precision demonstrate our capability of managing major projects. Congratulations to the entire team for work well done. It is our greatest honor to be part of this historic moment of the launch of the Mirkat Telescope in this beautiful province of the Northern Cape. We also wish to convey our collective gratitude as Africa to the SKA funders and the coordinating consortium comprising of Australia, Canada, China, Germany, India, Italy, New Zealand, Sweden, the Netherlands, the United King Kingdom, and South Africa. We also thank our African sisters and brothers who supported South Africa's bid to have this project built on our land. To the people of 
to the people and the governments of Botswana, Namibia, Mozambique, Madagascar, Mauritius, and Kenya, Zambia and Ghana, this is your success too. As you know, the SKA project is an international effort to build the world's largest radio telescope with a collecting area of approximately one square kilometer. This iconic instrument will produce science that changes our understanding of the universe. It will be located, co-located in Australia and in Africa. It is a factor that deserves mentioning that the telescope will be the largest of its own kind in the world. With the image resolution quality exceeding the Hubble Space Telescope by a factor of 50 times. This will give SKA unprecedented scope in observation, like we've seen, enabling it to produce transformational science. I'm quite impressed about the images that I've seen. And I can see more and more images coming out clearer and precise. We recall with great level of excitement that South Africa's involvement in the SKA began in 2001 with all the ministers that are sitting here. Um, we must say thank you to all of you. Our ministers, Minister Ngubane, up until to Minister Gopai. Uh, must not forget also Aneko. Uh, it is our proud history that the eight African countries I've just mentioned became a solid partner of the African beat as you are bidding to host this project. That means support was in abundance. There was no short, uh, shortage of support from the continent supporting our beat. The African Union heads of state and government supported our beat to host the SKA and committed Africa to participate in the global SKA project. The success of this project demonstrates that fulfilling Africa's vision 2063 is possible. We salute the African Ministerial Council on Science and Technology who recognized the potential of this project and made SKA a flagship project. Once again, we thank all former ministers of science and technology who in their various roles laid the basis for this work and ensured that indeed South Africa integrates with the world in pursuit of technological advances. That massive and agitated support fell on fatal ground because South Africa's vision for astronomy is to become a hub for astronomy, science, and facilities as articulated in our 10-year innovation plan 2008 to 2018. And the national strategy for multi-wavelength astronomy adopted by the Department of Science and Technology in 2015. South Africa has a natural, geographic, 
a geographical advantage that makes it suitable for cutting edge astronomy research across multi wavelength continuum. Through flagship astronomy projects such as this one here in the Northern Cape, the Southern African Large Telescope in Sutherland, and the African Very Long Baseline Interferometry Network, the country is gradually positioning itself as a global center of excellence in multi-wavelength astronomy research. We moved swiftly as South Africa to preserve our geographical advantage by passing the 2007 Astronomy Geographic Advantage Act, one of the most progressive pieces of legislation in the world. We owe the launch of Mirkat's 64 dishes to this privatization, uh, privatization act move, but a significant milestone was reached when, with the integration of the 16 dishes, the first light image was obtained. That was a clear indication that the Mirkat would once fully operational take its place among the world's leading research instrument. Accordingly, the Mirkat was recognized by the construction industry when it became the first recipient of a special platinum award at the 2017 Logistic Achievers Award. <laughs> this kind of an award celebrates excellence in the application of operational logistics and supply chain management principles. The sustainability of the SKA project is anchored in the fact that we have managed to develop in-house capacity in the continent. The Mirkat project is an iconic scientific instrument designed entirely by South Africans. Furthermore, 75% of the components that went into the construction were sourced locally. During the construction phase, we told more than 134 million was spent on local suppliers and 351 people were trained by major SKA contractors. In addition, more than 110 million was awarded to 16 small and medium enterprises through a financial assistance program. So that means the building of this project was also, uh, I mean, supported also the local small and medium enterprises and the people around the area, this province, benefited. This has also empowered your local industries here and institutions to acquire skills and expertise in advanced technologies and to grow their international competitiveness. There is no doubt that the launch of the Mirkat further strengthened the prospects of a larger role for South Africa in the construction of the SKA as it proceeds and promises numerous benefits for the country and the region as a whole. There has been visible impact on the real estate sector of the Northern Cape, which has led to the new economic opportunities for local communities. It gives us pleasure that the SKA project 
has had a direct impact on job creation, thus changing the lives of many families in this province. <clears throat> to date, the SKA project has created 7,284 employment opportunities through the construction of the Mirkat and the related projects. This includes the land acquisition, the resurfacing of the 80 kilometers road to the site, the construction of the 110 kilometer of power lines, the rollout of the fiber, as well as the Mirkat data center. I shall share with you that the SKA project spin-offs have come handy in the advancement of our national systems of innovation. This brings all of this under the umbrella of the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. It is an important step towards our ambition to create, in the medium to long term, a National Astronomy Institute to house all our aspects of astronomy in the country. The Mirkat has already made a significant scientific contribution, observing a rare burst of activity from an exotic star known as Magneta. This observation and the subsequent publication of an article in the Astrophysical Journal demonstrate the outstanding capabilities of the Mirkat as a new instrument for scientific exploration. In 2017, the South African Large Telescope and Mirkat Telescope also played an important role in a significant astronomy event involving the observation of gravitational waves. This proves that our telescopes have joined the leagues of globally sought after instruments for conducting big science, something that all Africans can be proud of. We are gradually getting there. We are aware that the SKA project's sustainability will be doomed without supportive human capital, without supporting our young students, our young learners. Now, this program has awarded bursaries, close to a thousand bursaries in science and engineering including 133 bursaries for recipients from other African countries. <clears throat> this is a step in the right direction. SKA South Africa also introduced mathematics and science at the local schools and employed a teacher for these subjects. And I'm sure SKA will partner with the province so that we improve math and science in our schools to support this big project. <clears throat> Currently, learners from the surrounding towns of Canavan are accommodated at the hostel in Canavan High School to study maths and science. We should sustain this. <clears throat> Through these initiatives, seven learners obtained good passes and are enrolled at various universities. 
the number of Canovan High School learners that are benefiting from a full cost undergraduate bursaries and technical vocational education and training college fund continues to grow. The SKA will further assist local schools with programs in school management, numeracy, and literacy. And most importantly, it will help all our schools with early childhood development. The importance of early childhood development in producing future scientists cannot be overemphasized as, as it lays the foundation for holistic development whilst cultivating lifelong learning. Further, SKA has established a temporary technical training center in order to create a pool of artisans and semi-skilled workers in Canavan and nearby towns. <clears throat> 21 students who graduated from the center have found employment at this site. Some we have met them as we are moving around and the, they are calling themselves now engineers. If you ask them, I'm an engineer, I'm an engineer. They've just recently qualified. A further 25 are currently undergoing work-based experiential learning at the SKA and will complete trade tests in 2019 with the prospects of being employed full-time in this project. There will be further local partnerships and tourism projects that will support this big initiative here. South Africa's geographic position has enabled Hydrogen Epoch of Renaissance Array Radio Telescope to be located in the Karo Astronomy Reserve. This enables astronomers to study the formations of the first stars of the galaxies in the universe. We are pleased to announce that the SKA South Africa-led consortium has received about 2.2 million euros from the Rio, Rio, European Union Horizon 2020 fund to undertake a detailed infrastructure design for the SKA site. <clears throat> Last week, we hosted President Nana Ado of Ghana on a state visit. During that visit, our two countries strengthened their partnership and economic relations. We noted with pride that Ghana recently became the first South Africa's eight African SKA partner countries to complete the conversion of the redundant communications antenna into a functioning radio telescope. The telescope was successfully launched uh, in Kutuse, Accra on the 24th of August 2017. So we are gradually, gradually getting there. Since its launch, the radio telescope has successfully carried out its first light observations. This is a testament to the hard work of the teams in South Africa and Ghana, the support of their European colleagues, 
and the vision of the African very long baseline in interferometer network project, which is strengthening Africa's leading role in the international SKA project. The consolidation of Africa's collective effort is a demonstration that the continent is not turning back on the application of science, technology, and innovation in solving our developmental challenges. Africa is still, has a still a lot to do, has a lot to contribute to the advancement of science, has a lot to contribute to the advancement of technology and innovation. So this is the time for Africa. The launch of this Mirkat project bears testimony to this fact. Science is the instrument we are going to use to expedite, expedite the meeting of our sustainable development goal targets. With this few words, we invite the world to come and witness what the united efforts and collaboration of all partner nations can achieve to advance human civilization. We're looking forward to the phase two of the project. But we're told that materials have started to arrive on site, so we're taking the next mile, the next journey. Thank you very much. Just quickly, Deputy President, as my king being here, we've got a gift for you that uh, will remind you, though you might not be able to go back to school, but standing in your office will remind you of what That's we have been able to, to, chat, to achieve. Thank you very much. We know that uh, the Deputy President has to take leave, but we thought because it is a celebratory event, let's give our guests a little bit of uh, culture, but also to show that at least scientists uh, do also appreciate culture. So uh, two items by the group that was going to provide us with the cultural item and then we'll do the vote of thanks. Unfortunately, they can't come to the stage. They will be on the side. I hope you'll be able to see and hear uh, the event.
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I now wish to request uh, District Mayor of Brixley, Kasame Municipality, Councillor Miriam Kibi, uh, to give a vote of thanks. A round of applause for you. Thank you, thank you, Program Director, Deputy President, the Minister, the Ministers, former Ministers of Social, uh, Science and Technology, uh, the Premier. Uh, let me not uh, name everybody, but uh, the international guests that are with us here our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, uh, the chairperson of the portfolio committee is also with us here. Thank you, Ma. Uh, our guests, councillors, mayors, and everybody here. Uh, Deputy President, DSD North Cup, it's here where you'll find the real dance. And if you had enough time, you could have seen the premier next to you. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me not waste any time because the, uh, the deputy president promised that he's going to come back. So now I don't want to delay him so that he would say, I'm not going to the Northern Cape again because they are keeping me too long and I'm going to miss my flight. But uh, I want to take this opportunity uh, that I've been given by the program director to thank everybody. Thank you, our brothers and sisters from International, for coming to this end of South Africa, for being with us to celebrate this special day with us. It's so special. Yes, it's an achievement for South Africa, but we, as Pixlika Seme and Namakwa, are the immediate beneficiaries of this project. We are therefore also calling uh, upon uh, those that cannot pronounce mere cut to practice because I, I want, when you come back uh, next time, I want them to have, there is a small Nyana animal that is found in this area, as the Lenumum de mere cut. I want you to see it next time when you come back. But uh, I know, I want to thank the management of the project. In the beginning of the project, as we have been listening, it was a bit tough because community did not really understand what is this project. Everybody was under the impression there's going to be a lot of jobs, everybody's going to work. And uh, later on, people found out, no man, this is going with, on phases. And uh, now they don't understand. But the management of this project they were so patient, tried to take the people of the area through all the processes, explaining to them slowly what is this all about. I want to thank everybody who donated to this project for putting this province, especially the two regions, Inamakwa and Pixlika Seme, on the map. Next time, Deputy President, when you come back, with all that you have told us, the uh, opportunities that will be coming to this area, you will get Carnival being a city, no more a town, a city. Because everybody, everybody will be coming to, to this area to see the Mirkat or the SKA. And by seeing the, uh, this area, they will be sleeping over in Carnival and spending their money there, and the rate of the unemployment is going to be uh, really the, uh, something of the past. Thank you so much uh, to the uh, area, to the project, for empowering our kids. I am also like the deputy president who is saying, I wish I can go to school again. But unfortunately, it's too late. Allow our children, let's encourage our children to use this opportunity because this is for them. In this year of celebrating Uma Mususulu Notata Umandela, I'm sure they are really shaking in their grave when they see what we are doing. We are saying 
as the Bixrika Seme and Namakwa, especially the Northern Cape. Thank you so much for making us so proud, for making us one of the most important areas in the Northern Cape. You could have gone elsewhere, but you chose in Northern Cape for this project. Thank you. Sadly, we've come to the end of this uh, uh, function. I'd like to make two announcements, and then after that, uh, we will unveil the, the picture, remember? Uh, so we'll move this, and I hope that, uh, Fernando, that's, that's been done. The first announcement is that uh, there are five serving stations for our meal on this side. Uh, please allow uh, our VIP guests in rows one and two to be the ones that will have the opportunity to go and help themselves first. It's a self-service and you will see the chairs and the tables over there. This would be followed by groups in rows uh, two and four and will follow the others in that order. The second announcement is that charter flights to the Lanseria Airport, Johannesburg, will start departing uh, at about 2 o'clock, 1400 hours this afternoon. The VIP guests traveling are urged to start moving to the landing strip from about 10 to 2, and of course I uh, will be around uh, to indicate to you uh, the sequence of uh, moving. So those are the two announcements. As I say, uh, Fernando, I just want to see whether we are ready to unveil the picture, and then we'll invite the uh, the deputy president also join in the in the picture session of course uh, the premier This one works now, if you want a portable one. Okay, so um, we'll first take the picture of the dignitaries and then...